¿Qué pasa, amigos? What is happening, my homies, my fellow traders? Man, it's good to have you here. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of this wonderful show, On Top and Hot, where we like to break down the OTC and penny stock markets. We're looking at stocks that got heat, stocks you're going to be interested in. And these stocks, well, they could be on any of the markets. Truth of the matter is, a penny stock is any stock under $5 five bucks and they're on every single market. So all of them qualify as penny stocks. Though the majority of what we look at is on the OTC market. That right there, that is majority OTC market news. Maybe one or two penny stocks off the NASDAQ in there. But primarily that's news I've looked at from the OTC markets over the last four or five days. You got your oldest news up at the top, your newest news down here at the bottom. And don't just glance at it, check it out. Freeze frame, <laughs> take notes folks. This is juicy news. This is the events, the acquisitions, the joint ventures, the mergers. This is the type of news that gets stocks moving. Moving. Stuff that announces things that are going to happen. And I know most of you don't get a chance to go through the news like I do. So there you go. There is clip notes on the OTC market news. Now, when it comes to OTC market information, I come to this site. This is the otcmarkets.com website. It's a business. The SEC and FINRA update this site every single day for every single OTC stock. I do not know of any other site online that that happens for. So if you're doing research on an OTC stock using Google or just floating around the internet, man, are you wasting a lot of time. Seriously, start here. All they post is current information. And I'm not going to say it's perfect, but if you don't find it here, you can always go out to the internet and get it. But usually you'll find what you're looking for. Make research easy. You can get a lot more done without the frustration. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Yesterday we had looked and we had did a high dollar share volume yesterday, 3 billion. Well, I refreshed my page later, we were actually at 3.3 billion. Let me refresh this again as we're speaking about it. 1.9, we're still at 1.9. So we were at 3.3 billion with our normal average being $2.1 billion, but we hadn't hit that for virtually three weeks. I didn't know if we were gonna get close to it. Yesterday, we just pummeled it right on over. But again, here we go, fluctuating hard. We're back under 2.1. I don't know why. I will tell you this though. Uh, monitoring the trades, as most of you know I do, I like to see how many trades a company has. I figure that's a great barometer for interest in that company. Then I go determine what that interest is, find the catalyst. Today, there were lots of stocks with lots of trades that weren't cheap. They were $10, $30, $60, and they had hundreds of trades today. So most of this money was actually going out for bigger stocks. I could see that, and those big price stocks are normally not where I'm looking. They can be there, but they're normally not there. They were today, a bunch of them. We only did 5.5 billion shares today. This isn't good, folks. That's half of 10. 10 is where we're out of bed and dressed and ready to do something. Five. I don't even know if we're out of bed, let alone dressed. Trades, well, we were over 300,000 trades yesterday after I refreshed it, and we haven't broke that in a long time. But obviously, it was just a bump, not a trend change. We're back down near our 250,000, which is where we've been hovering, 262. Now, I've got some interesting stocks today, stocks you'll want to take notes on. Well, if you're not taking notes, at least put them on your watch list. I didn't do this for nothing. I did it for you. Let me show you what I found. Now, here's a company I'm quite familiar with. We just haven't talked about much recently. This is ticker SHMP Natural Shrimp Incorporated. This is much like a fish farm, except they don't grow fish. They grow Right, shrimp. Now, they could grow fish if they wanted to. They've told us that. As a matter of fact, fish farms can grow crustaceans if they wanted to. I mean, it's just a matter of keeping the water clean. There's no real difference. I mean, the ocean is where everything grows. They got the same water, right? So, both can grow both, but fish farms are concentrating on fish and shrimp is concentrating on shrimp. Now, I was in this company back in 2020 when they first came into the picture and I got in at 30 cents. Then it fell hard, down to two cents. Well, I bought more at three cents. 
thank God, because shortly after I bought it, it took off. Had a huge bounce to 77 cents, came down and then ran again up over 80 cents. And that's where I sold all of my shrimp and I got out of it. Until here recently, I did buy a wee tiny small hold. I mean it, just 100 shares. And there was some good reasoning for that. The last time we talked about shrimp, it was because they announced a reverse split. They said it in one of their filings. There was going to be a 1 to 15 up to a 1 to 25. So for every 25 shares you had, they were going to give you one share. And they were going to kick the price up 25 times so it stayed even. But they had a very particularly weird clause that I've never seen before in their filing. It said if you have 100 or less shares, your shares will not be affected by the reverse split. What? Really? So today I've got 100 shares and Bill over here has 2,500. The reverse split happens. We wake up tomorrow and it's a done deal. I've still got my 100 shares, but old Bill, he's only got 100 shares. He lost 2,400 shares overnight. Now, he didn't lose any money. The price and the shares all equate. So he's even. It's the same for him. He just has less shares. But me, I've got all my shares and my price went up 25 times without me having to do a thing. Free money. We call that that's right. So we were waiting for that and it was supposed to have already happened and it didn't. So I don't know what's going on with that. I'm still holding my 100 shares. But today, Shrimp had news come out and it was great news. It had nothing to do with any reverse split. It had to do with them expanding their business, which is obviously going to help their revenues, which they're just now getting going on. Things are just now starting. So this is perfect timing for this kind of news. She finished today at 13 and a half cents with almost 64% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC market. This is the QB. We call it the better tier. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. A CPA, a licensed CPA actually audits their numbers. So all of them are actual factual numbers you can trust. That makes this company more transparent. So what was the relative volume around shrimps news today? Well, she's normally doing 1.1 million shares. Today, she did 9.1 million shares. So she's up about eight times. Share structure, it's not real low. <laughs> not by any means. We got 663 million in the float. So we are over a half a billion shares. The reverse split would definitely help that. That would bring that down considerably. But as it is right now, we're at 663 million. Financials. Well, they are making some money. It just isn't a whole lot. They weren't making anything last year. This year, their end of their year ends in March. So they made $33,000. We know it's thousands because they tell us to put these three zeros behind any number down here. But the strange thing here is, is that it didn't cost them anything really to grow shrimp. It didn't cost you anything. I really don't know where this income's coming from. It might be consultancy fees. They may be helping other people or something. Let's check the quarterly. We've only got one more quarter we can see. Well, they're up 36,000. Again, they didn't have to pay anything for it. It's, you know, nominal numbers, but they're on the board now and the news today definitely is going to help increase this. Let's look at their disclosures. See if there's anything recent over there that we should be aware of. Uh, most recent 8K was a couple weeks ago. Now, I love 8Ks, folks. I am always opening up case. They're real short, so you only have to scroll down a half a scroll, read a couple sentences, and you know what's going on. And this is where you're going to see your reverse splits, your reverse mergers, your acquisitions, your joint ventures. Lots of important news, and it's right there real quick. So I love 8Ks. They're like little eggs. You never know what's going to be inside. All right, so we got nothing here. Let's jump on over to the news. Now, they got lots of news here, just not great headlines. <laughs> Most all their news are updates. But you can see they're talking about Iowa and Texas, Florida expansion. They got lots of important information inside these updates. Matter of fact, we're going to take a look at their last update that came out on the 11th of last month. And this is important. 
The company has already established a regular live shrimp sales program with customers in Chicago and San Antonio. They're working out of their facility in Iowa and out of their facility in Texas. These customers are quickly selling their shrimp, rapidly increasing demand for more product. Deliveries are now increasing every week and Natural Shrimp's distribution footprint will significantly increase in Austin and Dallas following a recent success in San Antonio, which is where the new news comes in. Natural Shrimp, a biotechnology aquaculture company that has developed and patented the first shrimp-focused commercially operational recirculating aquaculture system, <sighs> Today announced a partnership with U.S. Foods, South Texas area, with an exclusive grow-out program for their customers in Austin, Houston, and San Antonio. Now check out how big this operation is. U.S. Foods is one of America's great food companies and a leading food service distributor partnering with approximately 250,000 restaurants and food service operators to help their businesses succeed. With 70 broad line locations and more than 80 cash and carry stores, U.S. Food and its 28,000 associates provides its customers with a broad and innovative food offering and a comprehensive suite of e-commerce, technology, and business solutions. This is in line with our strategy to deliver our quality product to restaurants inside a 300 mile radius within eight hours from harvest at our production facility in La Costa. So this is big news. That company there is going to get their shrimp in how many different places? Lost count. Lots of restaurants, lots of cash and carries. I mean, lots of places. So this is a great contract that's going to really help improve their revenues. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how it's been improving. Now, as we always do in every show, we're going to use my free trading platform, Thinkorswim, to do our charting. If you like what you see, just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, keep your account open, that's all you really got to do, and you can use this anytime you like. So we are now looking at SHMP, but this is a one week, three year chart. So every one of these bars represents an entire week. I got in back here. It's at 17 cents right here. I got in at 30, somewhere back here. She came tumbling down, hit a low bubble here of two cents. Somewhere after that low, I got in at three cents. So I averaged down. Can't remember what my average was, but what I do remember is I missed that. That jumped to 77 cents and I didn't sell anything. I have no idea why. I don't know if I was at the dentist or what. I hope I had a good excuse. But I got lucky. We had another run here that ran up to almost 90 cents and I unloaded everything up in this area. So I did pretty good. Since then, she has been falling all this time. Let's come on down to that six month, four hours. See if she's still falling. Yep, she has been falling for six months. Had a huge drop right here with a lot of volume in it. And today, today is the first time she has broke the 200 in a very long time. She didn't just break it. No, this is like the Olympics. She landed it right there at the top. She is stuck up there beautifully and our technicals are ripping right now, folks. These are high rises. Every single one of them is pointing up, looking great and our volume is incredible. Relatively speaking, nothing compares to today. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, she has been all this time falling very casually and slowly, but she is falling, falling, falling until today's hot news, expansion of business, more revenues coming in, huge contract. They're going to touch on to hundreds of thousands of businesses with their shrimp. It's got to help. So she had a rip. She hit a high here, pulled back off of that high and has bounced back up. And the technicals on the one hour are still scorching, red hot. Five day, five minute. So she hasn't been doing anything for the last four days. The thing you can notice is she's hanging around the 200. She's not getting too far from it. But today she launched herself. Hit that high bubble here at about noon, quarter after. She did pull back off of that, skirted across the 50 day SMA and is now launching again. Everything looks good on the chart. Our technicals, you can see she skirted right there. Boink, bouncing off of it like a, a rock skimming off the water. We got a change of direction here. You had your down 
and that followed and now it's changed direction. I love this. This all looks like a continuation, folks. There's a lot of people been following shrimp for a very long time for one reason or another. And there was bad news a while ago. Their business burnt down. So there was another down period for people who have been holding since 2020. Not everybody got out. Lots of people got back in and it's been at a very low price. And right now we are at 13 cents. She was at a high of 40 cents six months ago. And two years ago, she hit 90 cents. So there is room up there for her to grow. And now she's doing exactly what she's supposed to be doing, what we've been waiting for her to do growing shrimp and selling them in the United States. And it's the best fresh shrimp you're probably going to get. Shrimp, I like it. You might too. Yeehaw was this company hot today. This is sticker WSRC Western Sierra Resource. They had some big news come out today, huge. I'm not just talking millions of dollars. I am talking literally billions of dollar type news. And there was over 2,200 trades on this company today. In this market, the way it was today, 2,200 trades was incredible. So I got to figure there were at least a couple thousand people trading this stock, a lot of activity. She finished the day at 0 0.0705 with over 156% gains. She is on the pink tier and current, and she's got those precious green ticks I'm always telling her to look for. So she looks good. So what does Western Sierra Resources do? No, they don't raise horses. Western Sierra Resources is a multifaceted natural resource company focused on applying its $40 million in water assets to beneficial use for irrigation and cultivation of high value industrial hemp, which will be used to manufacture green building products for the construction of affordable homes. Now that may be hemp crete. It could be hardwood. It could be insulation, wallboard. You can make all of that stuff with hemp, believe it or not. But they also go on to tell us that they do other things. While these and other eco-friendly high yield projects are our focus, the company remains actively engaged in its gold, silver, and other precious mineral reserve projects as a hedge against global currency fluctuation. So they're doing a lot of things and the news today talks about even more. What was the relative volume today around that news? Well, she's normally doing under a half a million. Today she did 25 million. That is 50 times her normal volume. That's huge. Share structure, not bad. We got 161 million. I know we'd like to have something under a hundred, but that's better than a half a billion. 161 million shares in our float. Their financials, what sort of money are they making? Well, they were making money last year, $1.2 million. Uh, well, the end, 12 22 So we've still got a few more months. So that's what they did last year. Let's check out quarterly. Uh-oh. All right, so the beginning of the year, they did $195,000, but they got to keep it all. But the last quarter in June, they made absolutely nothing. So the news today is important because it definitely affects the revenues. Disclosures. Well, we do have some information over here I want to share with you. All right. All of their financials are current and their SEC filings. They've got something here in February. But what I want to show you is this material corporate event. This came out about 10 days ago. Now, this is important because it actually links with the news we're going to look at today. This came out September 18th. Western Sierra Resources discloses that the company has acquired 100% of Mitigations Solutions. MSL, Mitigation Solutions, is now a wholly owned subsidiary of the company, and they acquired this as part of their strategy to expand the company's capacity to accomplish its natural resource management and development objectives, which is exactly what today's news is all about. So what exactly does Mitigation Solutions do? Well, they're a great company. I mean, they help everybody, actually. MSL's experience is in flood and contaminated water mitigation, emergency flood defense, flood mitigation planning, slope and stream bank stabilization, beach and dune renourishment. So, you know, they're helping communities. They're helping the ecology. So it is a good company. Taking a look at their news. 
We've got two pieces of news here that we need to take a look at. I've already got it highlighted. <laughs> this is what we just read. On September 20th, the company announces its acquisition of mitigation solutions. Then we had news come out today. Western Sierra Resource Corporation announces $1.9 billion federally funded mitigation agreement executed on September 17th. The company's wholly owned subsidiary mitigation solutions is basically in charge. Let me show you this piece of news. So they tell us here that Western Sierra Resource announces that its wholly owned subsidiary mitigation solution signed on September 17th an agreement with Santa Maria Valley Water Conservative District in Santa Barbara County, California for the mitigation of Twitchwell Dam and Reservoir. The agreement has a value of $1.9 billion payable over 7 to 10 year period of the project, which is estimated to be $200 million a year in gross revenue. $200 million a year. That is a huge, huge jump. This scheduled revenue enhances the company's ability to fund its other natural resource projects without debt or dilution. The Twitchwa Dam and Reservoir site is the first of several California locations where these contract services may be performed by MSL. Two additional projects are currently in queue. Whoa! So folks, now there's a lot of information here, but basically that is the gist of it. They've got a contract that they're going to get paid $1.9 billion over the next 7 to 10 years, averaging out to roughly $200 million a year. And just so you remember what their financials were, 1.2 at the end of last year. <laughs> and quarterly, well, zero nothing. So this is huge news. No wonder it was running today. Do you think it's going to run tomorrow with that sort of news? Let's see what the charts say. We're now taking a look at WSRC six month, four hour chart. She has predominantly been under the 200 all this time. She did have a good bounce off of her low bubble here of about two and a quarter cents, got on top of her 200, but was short lived, came back down, has been consolidating for about a month here, had a drop down just before she ripped today. What a rip that is. Holy cow. She went from about two and a half cents up to almost 10 cents. So that's nearly 400% jump in one day from the bottom to the top before she came down. And our technicals are screaming, folks. Everything is scorching hot here, pushing to the moon. And our volume is very strong, relatively speaking, to anything else she's done. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Absolutely nothing for 19 days. God, this kind of looks like that last chart we looked at. She took off at the bell. Took off fast and in 30 minutes, she hit her high, 10 o'clock in the morning. Now folks, if you watch my shows regularly, you will hear me say this over and over again. If I get into a runner that's taken off from the bell, I will normally get out by 10, 10 05 at the latest. The reason, well, there seems to be a pause across the market at 10, 10 05, a small dip and then it waits. And you don't know if it's going to continue falling or it's going to come back. So rather than wait for that tossed coin to come down and land, I just get out and I take my gains. And I use the rest of the day for a whole nother play. So you get a strong runner in the morning, you may want to consider getting out at 10, 10 05 or that may happen to you. Now in saying that, she did keep way more than 50% of her gains. I could use the uh, Fibonacci to do this, but normally I'll just draw a line at the bottom of the surge, top of the surge, and then find the middle. Now you can eyeball it or you can do it mathematically. Close enough is good enough. The reason I'm doing this, I want to see the price stay above the 50% mark. That's 50% of everything she threw on the table. I want her to keep more than half. And if she keeps more than half, I figure it was a strong gain and she'll probably stay up above that 50% mark and continue growing. It's not a guarantee, but it's a probability in our favor. If it comes under that line, probability says it's going to fall even further. So I'm very happy with where it's sitting right now. Technicals are very strong on the one hourly. There is no fear there. Looking at our five day, five minute. All right. She had a strong jump for a half hour, pulled back 
and she is bouncing off of her own nine, which is the best place to bounce. If you're going to bounce, you want to bounce off the very first SMA you touch. And she was floating on that. She was riding it until she hit the 20. Once she hit the 20, she actually fell underneath her nine. You can't do any climbing until you get back on top of that 10 day, that nine day SMA. And now she was consolidating going sideways. She's falling under the 50 and now she's arguing with the 50. So she went from the 10 to the 20 to the 50, which isn't a good sign. She's going by every single SMA. Now the 200's way down here. Only thing in her favor is she is sitting above this 50 day, 50% uh, mark. So I would expect worse come to worse for her to bounce off of this and to start going back up. Absolutely would. There's a lot of money on the table. $200 million from 1.2 million last year. Uh, yeah, that's a serious increase in revenue. It's gotta be worth more than uh, uh, six cents. Right, it's gotta be worth more than six cents. So I would definitely keep my eye on this stock. The uh, technicals show she's cooled off. She does look like she's cooled off. Honestly, I would look for it to bounce off of here, 0 0.0627. If it comes below, it'll probably go down to the 200. But I would look for my buy-in price right here, a starter position. If she comes lower, you can average down right here but with that news folks with that amount of money and that's not just for one year that's 200 million dollars a year for the next seven to ten years Woo! that's a lot of money wsrc bank on it last stock we're taking a look at also had big money news today not in the billions, but it was in the millions. This is ticker AIAD, AI Advertising Inc. They finished today at 0 0.0065 with about 39% gains. They're on the pink tier, they're current. They've got those green ticks I tell you to look for, so everything looks great here. And they've got independent directors to boot. Now, the thing about independent directors, their primary purpose is for uplisting. You have to have independent directors to uplist. Now, being on the pink, they could go anywhere. QB, QX, NASDAQ, wherever they go, they must have independent directors. But here's the thing. If you're not going to uplist, you don't need independent directors. There's not any real purpose for them. So why have them on the payroll? So AIAD may have something up their sleeve about uplisting. So what does AI advertising do? <laughs> I bet you can guess. AI advertising is an artificial intelligence and machine learning data science and technology company. Our flagship solution, the AI ad platform, is the digital ad industry's first cloud hosted ad management platform that leverages AI. So what is the relative volume around the company's big news today? Well, she normally does 2.6 million shares a day. Today, she did almost 19 million. That's a nice jump. We're going to hope for a low float here. <sighs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> no low floats today. No, we got just a little over 1 billion in this float. What are the financials for AIAD? Well, they're actually making pretty decent money for being a pink. Uh, at the end of 2020, they had 9 million. They dropped down almost 3 million at the end of this last year to 6.8 million. Quarterly, what are they doing here quarterly? Well, not bad. They did $1.6 million last quarter. That was in June. And then in March, they did 1.2 million. Oh, but look at gross profit. That don't look too good. We got $9,000 down for the last quarter, 336,000 down for the first quarter of the year. So something's not going right here. So hopefully the news today is gonna make a difference here. Let's check out their disclosures. Anything recent? Uh, they're current on their financials and no, we don't have anything new here to look at. So all we really have is the news. So looking at the news, we've, uh, that's all old news. Look at that. That's 2019. We got anything newer down below? We do. This is imported from online somewhere else. We have news that came out today. AI advertising signs multi-million dollar agreement with FinTech Unicorn to empower its upcoming launch. And this is the news. So we're told down here, 
AI Advertising Inc., a next generation ad tech company focused on harnessing the power of artificial intelligence and machine learning to build software for today's marketing leaders, today announced it has signed a multi million dollar agreement with a fintech unicorn. No, that's not the name of the company, it's a financial technology company, and they are a unicorn. So what's going on here is they're not telling us the name of the company. That's probably prudent because a lot of shareholders will actually get in touch with the company and harass them, actually put the deal in jeopardy. So a lot of times they'll wait to the last minute to tell us what the company is. But that unicorn part, that is not just a pretty adjective that they're using. No, this has a definition. The word unicorn when referring to a company in the stocks is a billion dollar valuation. So they're basically telling us it is a fintech company worth at least a billion dollars. They go on to tell us that through the collaboration, AI advertising will implement its campaign performance platform, known as CPP, to empower the fintech's upcoming launch. They're not even out there yet. This billion dollar fintech company is not even out there yet. Now, I don't know if they're launching on the market. I don't know if it's a private company. They don't give us a whole lot of information here. We don't even know how many millions of dollars it's worth. It's just worth multi-millions of dollars. But you have a fintech company worth at least a billion dollars launching using them as their primary and probably only advertising agency because they're uniquely different. AI advertising CPP is the industry's first cloud hosted subscription based ad management solution that enables brands and agencies to easily plan, create, predict, execute, scale, and even measure digital advertising campaigns. In other words, it is an end-to-end -end comprehensive solution. Let's make advertising easy. And let's not forget, advertising is big money. That's how Facebook got rich. They didn't charge you and me anything for using Facebook. It was all the advertisers that had been paying them. They go on to tell us that today's announcement is especially noteworthy because this win represents our largest contract to date. This is the ideal opportunity for us to showcase the efficiencies of our platform to direct to consumer brands that are looking to deploy large budgets at scale without having to add headcount. We look forward to working closely with the fintech team as they bring their financial service products to the market. So there's a lot of brand new stuff happening here, a brand new type of advertising with a brand new fintech company that's worth a billion dollars and is going to be paying multi-millions of dollars to this company. Enough information to make it worthwhile and enough speculation to get the price to move. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is AIAD, Artificial Intelligent Advertising. We got a high bubble back here of almost a nickel, 0 0.0489, and well past the thousand percent down is our low bubble just a couple days ago of double zero four. She had a lot of volatility back here six months ago, but once it quit, she got docile. She fell all the way down here and for months has been going sideways until today. Today, she actually tap that 200. Now she didn't actually break through it, but she did crack it and she's falling and pushing back up. So I would fully anticipate another test of this 200 and hopefully she'll succeed. Technicals look like she's coming back up hard and furious. Our blue line is about ready to cross the pink on our PPO. MACD is already at a crossover approaching the signal line and our RSI is at 57, just about ready to break 60. And we got lots of volume today. You can see the volume has been increasing over the last couple of days, but she's been falling all this time, which goes to show you not all volume is good volume. Today's volume was. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, just like Jack and Jill rolling down the hill until it hit the low bubble. Bounced up a little bit yesterday and then today's news had it rocking and rolling jumped past the 200 day SMA, got above it, has come back down and is just right now underneath the 200. Nice placement actually. Technicals are real strong except for the RSI, but you got to expect that. We had a drop in price. That's why this dropped because that is the price line. If you change all these bars and make it a line, that is the line. 
So is there any wonder why people like to see the RSI climbing? It is the price. It only makes sense. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. A nice run first thing in the morning. She took off here from that double zero four five to almost nine, almost a hundred percent jump. And she did that in two and a half hours. 11 o'clock is when she quit rising. She came back down hard, hit her 50 day SMA, has been creeping across that for a while, fell below that, and is now down here. Now, I am going to actually grab our Fibonacci, which is the same thing as my top line, bottom line, cut it in the middle. But this gives you more lines as well. So I'm going to poke it down there at the bottom and then poke it here at the top. So right here, let me get my white line so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to put our 50% mark right on top of their 50% mark. So there you go. So we are a little bit below it right now. Now, if you're hanging on to the line like a monkey on a bar, that's okay. But that's starting to pull away. That is now sitting on this line. That is not okay. This will have a tendency to dribble down and probably not stop until it hits this 200-day SMA. And if things are strong and righteous, that's where it's going to bounce right there. So it has already come down below this line. If it breaks uh, 0063, you can use these lines as supports and resistances. Even though you haven't got them attached to any prices in the back, the algorithm has already figured all this stuff out. They're not exactly on the money, but they're close enough to work with. So she has one line down from the 50, and she's looked like she's sitting on it. I would watch this right now, AIAD. But they've got more to give us, don't they? they got to tell us how much money. That launch is coming. We're going to find out the name of the company that's worth over a billion dollars and using this company to advertise for them. So there's more to come. This is the first jump. It's a little bit under that 50%. I honestly think it'll probably come down here to 0056 and then bounce. That's my guess. Do your own DD, folks. You can't do anything wrong by doing your own DD. So I do like AIAD. They're already making money and they've got a good contract with a billion dollar company. Now, those are the sort of things I like to share with you. Tickers that got news about making mo money. Mo money. You got shrimp. They have got tens of thousands of avenues to distribute their shrimp now. That is definitely going to increase their revenues, which is what everybody's been waiting for for a very long time. And then you got WSRC. Come on, $200 million a year for a few years. Every year they're going to get that money. And they were doing what? $1.2 million? And the last company, AIAD, multi-million dollar deal with a unicorn company, a company worth over a billion dollars, a fintech company that's about ready to launch. This is exciting stuff. This is stuff where we can see more to come on the charts. But do your own DD. You'll probably find more information than I shared with you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.